Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with present airline pilot who flies all over North America and around, has seen this world from above. And uh, I had a chance to meet him about a year ago, right? Correct. And uh, well, his name's Joe. So everybody say hi to Joe. Um, the reason his face is blurred out is because he is currently um, a pilot and this would be a conflict of interest? Correct, yeah. We're all, uh, all of our companies make us sign an agreement where we're not allowed to speak to any media and any questions. Um, actually, any pilot has uh, presented to them in the United States by any media organization needs to be directed to our company spokesperson and or uh, union representatives. Um, basically, they don't want any of us talking to uh, any media about anything not just crash uh, and incidents but flight altogether. experience anything correct which is kind of interesting wouldn't you say <laughs> um, seems that that that's a pretty good wall of defense to keep um, anything that you might be seeing out there in the air um, what 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 an airline pilot thinks of what this earth looks like so you've been looking into the flat earth concept for how I've been looking into it just for the past couple years. Um, it all started off with uh, it all started off with looking at uh, some pictures that NASA had presented in the past, and I saw some pictures of the original moon landing that I had some questions about. And then a few years ago, they were supposed to release all of these pictures that had never been seen before, and. Uh, and it was supposed to prove a lot of naysayers wrong, and then all of a sudden those pictures mysteriously disappeared. And uh, whenever you see companies like that, NASA doing something, um, it raises a lot of questions. So the more research I did, the more questions I had, the more questions I had, the lack of answers. So I started to do my own research, and I really had more questions that I had answers, and uh, through my research of flight paths and what I've seen and um, talking to fellow military aviators, lack of any tours in Antarctica, um, I was left dumbfounded, and uh, since then I've, I've been doing a lot of research, not as much as I should be doing. But uh, that's what uh, led Adam and I uh, to, to talking, and here we are today. Yep. Joe's been a, a really good teacher and a um, student, both a teacher and a student of mine, and we all have a lot to learn from each other when we can kind of combine our perspectives and see what actually makes sense. What, uh, what do you think? drives you, you said a minute ago that you're maybe not doing as much research as, as you wish you, you were. What, what is it that drives you to, to want to, to know more? It seems like so many people are just content with not knowing. Well, I think that's exactly it, is the more you learn, the scarier it is, because if it is true, and the evidence has led me to believe so. Um, I, I just flew back from Dubai and I was in Bali, Indonesia before that. And, and if, if it is true, then it, it means we're, we're all on a farm and we're being lied to. And it's like you're, you're a sheep on the farm, maybe not for the slaughter, but then, you know, other sheep, come to, to warn you, hey, you're on this farm and, 
and you may want to escape people, may, maybe like Jesus and, and, and Buddha and many others before them that have been persecuted. And if it's true, we need to find out and, and, and listen to these people uh, like Adam that, that find a way out, maybe not a literal way, but, but through love or, or, or something. And that's what I'm searching for the answers for. Do you have any questions that, that maybe you've asked me in the past or that you haven't thought of yet or you're thinking of now that you think uh, might help bring clear, clarity? Well, the biggest question is the question that I had today is, is what can we do about it? Because, like I said, is I feel like we're all trapped here and we're, we're being lied to. Uh, being lied to about a, multiple things, and whoever is in charge, like I was telling Adam, if it's whatever you want to call it, if it's the Illuminati or bankers or, or Zionists, is, you know, what can we do? You know, can we lead an expedition through Antarctica? Is it, is it through love? Is it through going within ourselves? Is it... Uh, Maybe like Buddha found some sort of, of of harmony is my biggest question is is it's not the facts it's it's what what we can do as individuals to you know what are we supposed to do and I think we've been given guidance but not in the past a hundred years you know by a by a figure like like Christ or Buddha so kind of all in here on this adventure by ourselves so that's my question is you know what can we really do for ourselves to to I don't know if escapes the right word definitely um I think that's a question a lot of people have like does making a YouTube video about it even help does bringing awareness to the problems actually help or does kind of recognizing the problems and then focusing on the solution is that is that more in alignment with with what we can do and I think I I kind of tried to attempted the answer to that earlier but I feel like it is something that we have to reach within because whenever I've had any problems in my life the longer I spent focusing on the problem being like damn it or you know this thing screwed up on me or you know just staying in that place of here's the problem it, it, it blocks me from the place, which is always, okay, you know, this has happened, and now I have to deal with it, and, you know, I'm worth trying to make this better. And it's from that place, which sometimes it doesn't even look like it is, but it's love, that's how I see it, um, that we actually can solutions to all the problems within ourselves, and it's really maybe more of a, a matter of perspective than actually changing the world, but maybe changing how we see the world. I first got into Flat Earth like two years ago, and probably about the same time you, you first heard of it. And I always wondered like, you know, is there, I, mean, I don't fly air. Rumors that looking out the cockpit window is not the same as looking out the side windows of the aircraft that are more kind of fish-eyed and correct double double layered so that it does kind of make a curve curved horizon but uh, I remember I asked you last time is it true does it look flat from the front of the aircraft it looks completely flat from the front of the aircraft you're absolutely right the uh, all the windows from the passenger's perspective are curved and you could read a lot of textbooks that's, that state reasons why, but it's not the the curve that that the airplanes need. It's basically the, the triple pane and, and shape of the window. So and that's one of many uh, anomalies that I've seen flying that I've just uh, been perplexed by over the years. 
One thing I've noticed, well, I've been on a couple flights, and probably the last one was in 2014. I flew all the way to New York and back, spent a couple weeks there. But during the flight, it was always at night, so I never really got to see much of the land as we were crossing over to really see if there was curvature or not. But the thing I noticed is on the there's a little TV screen in front of each of the seats and it, it would show you could watch TV or you know pay for some weird movie but it would show you the airspeed and the temperature of the air correct and I noticed it's really cold up higher the a higher you go absolutely and I'm curious when you're flying in the daytime and say I mean do flights ever fly directly under the Sun have you ever flown like under the sun? I, I, I've never thought about that, but uh, no, I've never... Come near it? No, I, I've never flown directly under the sun, at least not that... Is it possible that the flight coordinators are aware that if you fly too close to the sun, you're going to burn up? Or it's... Or is it hotter near it, the sun? It, it's something okay. that I've actually never thought about but uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because I literally never thought of it but yeah the Sun has never been directly overhead of the uh, of the aircraft one thing that I've thought about though is when, let's say you're flying the average commercial aircraft flies at about 38,000 feet which up there the temperature is about negative 50, maybe negative 60 degrees, we always use Celsius. At, at that temperature, it's about the same as Fahrenheit. And one of the examples that they use where you can't fly over in Antarctica, it's on a little bit different topic. Do you mind if I yeah. just briefly say yeah. this? Yeah. Temperatures are so extreme, and but the temperatures are so extreme at every altitude that we we fly at, and we're always flying around thunderstorms and supercells, and and once I heard that the, the argument of these extreme temperatures, you can't get more extreme temperatures literally than what we fly. And, and, and ice can't freeze, uh, I'm sorry, ice past negative 30, it can't gather on the aircraft. So once you're flying at that altitude of, in, in those extreme temperatures, you're not worried about any ice accumulation, any ice ingestion in the engine. So the argument that you can't fly over Antarctica due to the extreme weather conditions is is just a complete complete lie. Um, like I said, I've never thought about the, the, the sun thing, but I've thought about the, uh, la the zero flights over Antarctica, and um, that's led me to more more questions. But I'll definitely have to look more into the sun. I, I've never seen overhead. Um, I, I know a lot of flat earthers know about the ex how the moon and the sun ap appear to be the exact same size from our visual perspective. I've seen moon, moon rises that look like sunrise rise when the sun was supposed to be on the other side. I've seen so many anomalies in the course of the that, uh, that's led me to where I was. That's when I ran into Adam and, and he was just such a wealth of knowledge of words and etymology of words and uh, and really an amazing figure that's why I've agreed to do this interview although Thanks, buddy. Um, it's probably definitely put my career at risk absolutely and I uh, that's why I've done what I've done this face here <laughs> and you, you can't see it so um, hopefully we we keep him uh, safe in the sky there as our eyes in the sky, and uh, I really appreciate you, you going out on a limb for uh, for humanity. Really, is what you're doing it for, and for yourself to make your world a better place. But uh, yeah, I think I think this might be one of the things that I mean. It seems to me one of the things we can do is, is talk to each other and bring uh, awareness to what the truth is, because they say the truth sets you free. But they, they don't usually mention it scares the shit out of you first. <laughs> so another question I want to ask you about the sun is I've seen video.
from airplanes where the sun from their perspective appears beneath them. Have you ever witnessed that or have seen those videos or what that? Um, Maybe it's far enough away I can imagine but I'm not sure if I exactly understand the question in terms of it. Like it's you see clouds Maybe I'll show a clip on here, but I don't know if you've seen it um, where you see the, the light from what is, appears to be the sun coming through clouds from off in the distance, like on the other side of those, those clouds, not, you know, way up in the sky. Oh, in, in terms of its setting and, and its... Yeah, it could be like, you know, towards sunset time, I would imagine it would have to be in order for it to even be possible to do that, but... Um, you haven't seen any of those videos or I'd have to look at the videos but I've seen multiple times where yeah, where the sun's beneath me and I've, I've never seen it where it's directly over the the ground or or something like that but yeah. I guess I'd have to I mean like off in the distance Oh often off in the distance plenty of times yeah where you're higher than the apparent sun than the apparent sun absolutely um have you have you done any heard any uh, done any research into refraction? I, I have not. No. Okay. Well, um, have you heard of Rob Skiba? I have not. Rob Skiba is a lot bigger channel than I am, but I um, copied one of his models of an experiment. I'll send you a link later so you can see it. But um, basically, I take a, a table, and there's uh, I use my my phone as the perspective point. And then I have a little drawing of the sun that moves across the table. And between the two, I put a refractory sheet, uh, basically a magnifying sheet that you get out of like a daily planner. And as you move the sun away from that refractory sheet, it appears to set below the apparent horizon. But you move the refract, pull the refractory sheet out, and it's still right there on the table, showing how could possibly explaining how the sun could set on a flat earth when you know common sense might make you think if the earth is flat that you would just see the sun all the time because it's you know so high up but um they say or, or not they say hey, my eyes tell me that you know the light bends up at a certain distance away and it doesn't you know, it doesn't travel forever like we're taught in the geocentric model and we're given the equations for the speed of light that it's astronomically fast and you know it's it might as well be instantaneous here on earth because it's only 25,000 miles around the the earth one thing that i that, that i can say in an anomaly that i've seen i i haven't i know what refraction is i haven't studied it in depth one thing that i have noticed flying that has completely blown my mind is the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and there's been plenty of times where the sun we've been flying eastbound late at night we do a lot of red eye flying where you leave at you know 10 o'clock at night and then land at six in the morning but where the sun is set and you would actually where it's just set on the other you know, set in the west, and then you see a little glimpse hours later on the east where I'd, I'd ask the other pilot, I'd say, you know, is, that the, is that the sun rising? You know, is, there, is, is that a moon rise? And then it would dip back below, but I've seen where my mind was just blown because it didn't make any sense whatsoever um, and then we take our little Apple or Android star map out to find where the moon was and it wasn't there but basically it looked like the Sun was about to rise in front of us in the east when it had just set behind us in the west hours prior and then of course you know six hours later it would rise in the east but basically I've seen just positions of the sun where it shouldn't shouldn't be um, from that altitude going back to your previous question at that point you know it's definitely below us 
and it never fully rose, but I mean, without any question, it wasn't a star or the moon. It was a sun rising on the other side of the earth when wow. it was supposed to be in the west. So I've seen plenty of things like that. Like I said, where I've queried the other guy or gal that I've been flying with, and we were just, you kind of both shrug it off and say, well, maybe it was a star or something, but just these impossibilities that until you query me with these questions that you kind of forget about and then just keep on flying. And that seems to happen a lot where you bring up something that is mind blowing and then you just kind of, well, you pass it off as almost as someone saw a ghost or something. Well, you know, you forget yeah. about it and keep on. That doesn't fit in our paradigm. Mind. So, um, I don't know if that's exactly. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I think so. You see the the light coming from the east when it should be on the other side. I've seen that um, a, a dozen times. You never see it like you can't see the light from the north or. Because um, if it is a flat Earth, like if 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 it's a circle, like the I think the model a lot of us have gotten used to, you would expect that at some some height, and if the at some height you would see it, you know, to the north directly sure. across. But you're saying it kind of wraps around sooner when you're up high, maybe well, the light from it. What I'm saying is. When it was setting in the west, and we were flying east, that you know, a few hours later, you know, our view is about 180 degrees. Sure, often it would be a little, a little more northeast. north, northeast, not directly in front of us. But then it would it would stay dipped below the horizon when it was it would it would rise and set when it was supposed to be behind us. And I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're asking. But uh, one of the anomalies I've definitely seen is is the sun in, in the position that it was not supposed to be in a round Earth model. Mul multiple times. Sure. Sure. One question that just came to me. Um, flying, if it's a flat circle Earth and that the lines of latitude are circles, and then if you were to fly straight, then you would always end up going south in that, you know, theoretically. So, here's my question. When you're following your coordinate system, or keeping track of where you're at, which I don't know how, how well you even do that, or need to, but um, do you feel like when you're going west, do you have to continue to turn left in order to stay straight, or do you just go straight and that's west? We keep going straight and that's west. It's, it's as if there's something else going on other than just what we even think we're evolving to understand. Well, so what's your take on that? How that's, Is that just a, a mind blow? It, it really isn't. It's something that I've, I've never thought about, but uh, you're absolutely right in that regard, as if you were following you know, the, the curved earth, you wouldn't be pointing wet, you know, due west and uh, ending up in you know another location like you said you'd be doing multiple turns something else that I've, I've thought about along those lines is oftentimes as well you talked you mentioned um, you've mentioned you know how exactly do you do that we do it through multiple systems in the aircraft we have these these you have GPS and these internal navigation systems, um, VOR systems, NDB systems, we have so many navigational systems, but oftentimes you'll be flying along, very oftentimes you'll be flying along, and all those will go haywire, and so then you'll just be getting coordinates from you know, our, our government air traffic control on, on exactly how to fly, and then they basically say that they're you know, jamming the, the radar, they're practicing it for war games or something like that. But um, it seems like oftentimes when you should be doing something like that, uh, especially when you're flying west 
across the United States, you'll reach a certain point where your systems will uh, be altered and then you'll be given coordinates to fly. Um, so I don't know if that, uh, if that was along the, the yeah. same lines with what you were. So you're not always, so to speak, being tracked, like the GPS tracking system doesn't always know where you're at? Oh, it, they always know exactly where you're at. Uh, the, the radar coverage in the United States is, is 100%, sure. but oftentimes it seems like they don't want you to know exactly where you're at. And so is it is it ever difficult to tell? I mean, you have the windows, you just look out and see, and once you, I, I know when I take like, the first time I drove all the way to Flagstaff, it took like two and a half hours, two and a half hours, but it felt like 10 hours because it was all new to me. And then the second time, you know, it goes faster and faster each time as you get more used to the road marks and the road, you know, the, the things along the way that, that you see. Um, is it kind of like that with flying? Like, you're like, oh, I remember that. Or do you kind of always see new things? No. Oftentimes it, it, it's, it's both, you know, you'll, sometimes you'll fly over the Grand Canyon and recognize that or uh, a certain landmark in the ground. But oftentimes they'll, they'll vector you a certain way. Um, but yeah, the vast majority of the time I would say you'll recognize similar landmarks along the, the route of flight. Okay. Um, if that answers your question. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else you want to put out there? The things you've seen that maybe other questions you have from from your experience? How many how many hours of experience do you have in the air? Um, I I've been commercially flying for the last twelve years. I've worked for uh, three major airlines in the United States that I'm sure uh, everybody's heard of. Um, I've met pilots in the military, um, pilots in New Zealand, and especially when you talk to pilots in New Zealand, that's where you get the most, you get the most questions that they don't even have answers to because some of your shortest routes should be over Antarctica and they're not, and they have questions. And as I was telling Adam uh, one time before, is a lot of times you present these questions, and they just don't want to talk about it, or you, you raise something, and and it just it, they get uncomfortable. It would be like asking somebody a, a question about what what some theory on on another nature, or uh, you ask a pilot about something abnormal, about 9-11 or something, as soon as you bring it up, they kind of get uncomfortable, and maybe they start thinking about their career or job, and they don't want to be grouped into that category. So a lot of times, you meet people that have questions. I think all of us have, as aviators have questions. We see things that don't make sense. Um, so many pilots have seen strange things that that I don't even want to go off on another tangent. But like I said, is so many of them are concerned about their financial careers, their family, their medical. You mention something and you're crazy, you lose your medical license and your career is over. And there's so much fear out there that we're really not allowed to talk about any of this. And it's it's horrible. And it's not just pilots. It's it's astronauts, um, it's everyone. When you sign these waivers that you're not allowed to talk about any of this because the fact of the matter is, is they don't want you to know that essentially we're all on this farm here and what are we doing on it is the, is the ultimate question. So, and that's what I got out of Adam is I, I, I hope, love, is the, the escape. Um, I'm not talking about going out there and doing anything crazy, but but going within. I've talked to another pilot who was open to this. He talked about uh, you know 
tapping the source, God, spirituality, something is, is, if this is all artificial, find the reality, tap into that, get that information, and, and leave the farm. That's, that's yeah. what I've got. Yeah, rise so. above it. Good stuff. Well, uh, I'm not sure what else we can cover. You mentioned 9-11, and I've heard from a lot of pilots that uh, that maneuver of aircraft is uh, something to be pretty impressed with um, as far as being able to maneuver a plane to make those types of turns and and just nail those buildings so dead on center. Yeah. E every pilot knows it. Even if they don't know it, if you ask them the, the physics, if you ask them the air speeds, they'll say, oh, an air, it's called your maximum operating airspeed. They do tests on every aircraft that at a certain speed, an aircraft will literally just disintegrate in the air, that it's not structurally able to take that. It's happened um, with the it was Japan Airlines, it hit some extreme turbulence many years ago, and the aircraft reached an airspeed not even close to what the, the aircraft on 9-11 reached, and, and they, they break up, stuff starts falling off, and they reach these, air, these impossible airspeeds, and, and everybody knows it. Um, I could go go on, on and on about mock tuck, mock buffet. Once you're at that altitude, even at, at that low altitude, at that high airspeed, even the slightest pitch or bank, you're gonna you're gonna go into a mock tuck. You're gonna the aircraft's gonna gonna stall. Uh, the the engines are gonna compress or stall. It, it's an impossibility that once again. Um, Everybody knows, but nobody wants to talk about. And you hate it because then all of a sudden you hear people say, oh, well, he's one of those truthers. Or, But in reality, it's a joke. It really is. It's, it's, everybody knows it, but no one wants to talk about it. it was, it'd be like if you had that neighbor that everyone knew was doing something wrong or back in the day the the president that had a slave that he was sleeping with that everyone knew about but nobody wanted to talk about it and that's one of the sad realities of of the system that we're living in is it's all fear based you talk about it you're going to be labeled as crazy a conspiracy theorist you know you're going to lose your job and and that's that's the sad reality and it it's all linked um, yeah. Like I said, I think the same people behind that are the same people that that are pulling the wool over your eyes. So. Yeah, it seems that they work very, very hard to uh, deceive us, and they 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 teach us from day one. They put this thing in our face, right? Right when we're old enough to not even read, they say, "Oh, this is where you live," and. Uh, you can question it, you can, you know, wrap your head around it, you can see it all, but on the bottom, it almost always says, not for educational purposes. I don't see it on this one, though. Oh, it's probably on there somewhere. I've never looked, but... It's usually on the base, but this one doesn't have that. I saw that in Daphne Rimmel's video the other day. It doesn't feel like that the truth of Flat Earth is going back in the box. It, it seems like it's just it keeps growing, and and the more the first time I heard of it, it was completely retarded. I could not even consider that. No. I was I was looking into Hollow Earth and and Admiral Byrd's trips. Have you heard of Admiral Byrd? I have, yeah. And how he went to the North Pole, but then changed his story and said it was the South Pole, and then says there's more land down there. And part of it to me, it feels like a distraction, like. Because they say, oh, is there more to explore in the North Pole? And he says in his little interview that, oh, no, it's getting quite crowded up there. But on the other side of Little America in Antarctica, there's a whole lot more to be found. And to me, that kind of feels like misdirection. And it also might just be straight up truth. It's hard to, it's hard to say. So I try to keep my ears open to new evidence and see where it takes me. 
What is the most important thing that you feel you have learned through all this truth seeking? Oh gosh, I feel like I'm still on the journey for that that ultimate uh, learning. But the um, thing of greatest importance that I, I truly believe is that we're all connected. And two, what they want us to believe is that we're so insignificant that we're just this tiny little earth floating in this vast universe that you're, you don't mean anything, your life doesn't mean anything, and that's part of enslaving, enslaving somebody. If, if anyone else were to do that, if you were to, to kidnap a child and, and do that, and you know, you're meaningless, you're worthless, and that person would be locked up for you know, verbal abuse or, or torture later on, but they, they're trying to, to teach this religion of, of that you have no meaning, you have no purpose, that your purpose is just to make money and to, to work and consume and to go in this vicious cycle while well, they, um, you know, blame Muslims for wars that the United States has, has created. Libya, I've, I've been there, was just fine before we overthrew Gaddafi. Syria was just fine before we intervened. Iraq was just fine. Sure, we had, they had some cruel leaders, but we've had some the same, but they're creating this chaos in the world we're worshiping these celebrities. Like I talked to him, if, uh, I was listening to that Katy Perry song on the radio that talks about how we're all living in a bubble. There's these messages all around us where they try to make us seem so insignificant, but we're so much more than that. And that's the journey that I'm on is to, is to find it. I think Jesus found it. I think Buddha found it. I think many other people have found it. And I think that that's really what what we need to to learn and find is that, that you're more than that. There's so much more out there. And is the answer literally on the other side of Antarctica, past that ice wall, once you get out there, is it like a literally a sheep that escaped from the farm and now all of a sudden you're in the, the way you're supposed to be? Is it literally? Is it metaphorically? Is it spiritually? That is the ultimate answer. But the biggest thing that I've learned is that it's one of those and that this isn't it. We're, we're not just just some nobodies here. We are everything. This couch is, is here because we, we see it. We are it. Light shines on it, but we, we perceive it. And that's what we are. We are, we are everything. We are all knowing, all, all powerful, and you know I could go on and on. Yeah, <laughs> but, man. But that's that's the most important thing that I've learned. And uh, me too. Well, it's been a great interview. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate your time. So I know that, you're a busy man. You probably got to get back on the plane. Absolutely. This really is a wonderful man. The first time I ever met him, he, he really was a Christ-like figure in terms of his love for, for people and, and truth and there's not a bad bone in his body. When, when I met him, I have to say that, that his message to you all is important. He knows way more than he, he's probably showing on, on this channel because sometimes these interviews are difficult, but, but please continue to listen in, to listen to his messages because like he just said, the truth's out there and the truth is the only thing that's going to set you free. We have to learn from each other and learn from people like this that I believe have a gift that need to be shared with you all. So please like, subscribe, share it with your friends and, and get this message out there of not just flat earth, but love and, and that we're all being duped and, and the real answer's out there and, and He's closer to it than I am. I'm, I'm just a person flying out there that sees a bunch of stuff that doesn't make any sense and knows for a fact that we are being lied to. So that's...
all I have to say. So it's been a pleasure, and and thanks for having me on your channel. And uh, <laughs> I hope I hope it doesn't uh, mess with my career. But I guess if it does, then you'll it'll even prove it further that it all is one big lie. So thanks yeah. thanks for your time, and and it's been a no fear great experience. Yes, sir. Awesome.